Candyman, 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 Candyman. Candyman. Welcome to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Today, I am joined by director, screenwriter, and editor, Philip Johnson. Philip, how are you doing today, man? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for asking. Um, in addition to being a jack of all trades, Philip is also the owner of J96 Productions, the freelance film production company. Um, for the people that don't know, what can you tell us a little bit about J96 Productions, what you guys are doing over there? Well, here at J96 Productions, we really just have a YouTube channel. We also have, you know, all the social media outlets, but we really focus on psychological horror films. Uh, we usually focus on making those. Um, our YouTube channel has lots, lots of tips and tricks, you know, when it comes to making films. Uh, we put out a lot of our content that we have, like behind the scenes photos, videos, things like that. Um, so we're really just uh, a, a lot more of a horror film company when it comes to the films that we make. And you guys can check out all their social media links as well as their YouTube right down here in the description. So I strongly recommend you do that. Make sure you're giving them a follow on social media. Make sure you're subscribing to them here on YouTube. You can never know too much, man. So what made you want to start J96 Production? What got that ball rolling? Well, when I saw Jordan Peele make his rendition of uh, a horror film when it came to Get Out, um, something like along those lines made me think, okay, well, I could do something similar and I could, you know, make it my own spin, you know, have my own spin to it. And, and really, I wanted to make it because uh, having a film company has always been a goal of mine. It's always been a goal to try to get as much of my story into horror as I could. And the fact that, you know, I was actually able to go to film school for a while and actually use their equipment and actually get, you know, used to it made me realize that I could definitely start making these films, you know, making these storylines, these screenplays and things like that. So I just figured I'd rather take all that on to myself and, you know, just hit the ball rolling without needing somebody else to just have to lean on all the time, you know? It's good that you could find inspiration. You know, it's something that, you know, like Get Out, you were talking about um, with Jordan Peele. And we're going to talk more about Jordan Peele here in a little bit, but it's such an influential horror movie. And it's one that I think really opened up a lot of eyes that a uh, uh, black guy that's known for his comedy routines and, you know, go going all the way back to even um, on Fox, they had the Mad TV show and him and Jordan Peele were a part of that. And then you had Key and Peele. And then you watch what Jordan Peele does with, get out and then with us i mean he's somebody that's so influential in the genre and he's going to be remaking the people under the stairs here in the next couple of years he's talked about which is another movie that was really it'll we'll talk more about that once we get into your first horror movie so there's a lot of that that we could talk about with that but um what's go what's the future for j96 productions what do you have coming up here in the future um, well, right now we, uh, we're going to be letting our trailer out for our short film that we just did actually tomorrow. It's going to be tomorrow at 11 a.m. on our YouTube channel. Um, uh -huh. And it's basically a short film about a family going through some turmoil, you know, uh, recovering from a death in the family. And it all turns out that it's a really big family issue. Um, honestly, it's like one of those stories that you got to pay attention to understand what's going on. Um, and we also have the actual short film itself coming out on March the 10th. So uh, just stay tuned for that. But we're also going to be doing uh, a rollout of our videography line. We're going to be trying to get local businesses to make cinematic commercials for them, too, as well. Yeah. As long um, as, long as uh, you know, we get a lot more people involved. Um, mm -hmm. And we're also trying to work on some more short films, trying to get people you know, who haven't really been on set for real to try and get with us and actually give them the experience that they need to kind of get their foot in the door too. So it's a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing. And that's awesome, man. And by the time this airs, guys, the trailer will already be out. So I have the trailer link right down here in the description as well. So make sure when you're checking these links out, you're checking out this trailer so you can watch what they're doing over there. I'm so excited about this short film. I can't wait. And then that 
when the short comes out, that will also be available on YouTube, I assume? Yes, definitely. For sure. Awesome. So I'm very excited for that. So, Philip, we know what's coming up with J96 Productions. We know what you're doing now. But, my friend, I want to take it back to the past. And I want to start talking about the first horror movie that you ever watched. And your first horror movie was? It was Candyman. It's a movie that I love. I love that movie. Yes. And the reason I was talking about Jordan Peele is he's producing the Candyman remake that is coming out this year. And that's another movie that is, I look at Candyman the same way I look at Tales from the Hood and People Under the Stairs, where you do have a lot of, you know, social issues that are taking place in this movie, but it is a horror movie first. It's not trying to pound a message at you. It is a horror movie with a message, not a message that has a movie wrapped around it. And one scene that's always been that way is when Helen is talking about when she got attacked and she was like, you know, there were murders at this apartment complex in Chicago and the police did nothing but a white woman gets attacked and they, the police are there in minutes. And it just shows how long this injustice has been going on and how we're, we keep saying that we're moving ahead. But even if you watch these films, this is what, 93, I want to say this was released, 92, the same things were happening then. We just didn't have the platforms to be able to get it out there for people to know how really bad it is. And I'm so excited to see what Jordan Peele does with this. Um, like I said, this and the people under the stairs. These are two films I think Jordan Peele could absolutely modernize and make into something amazing. So uh, do you remember how old you were the first time you had seen Candyman? Um, I'd say I was probably about 10 years old, probably. Um, and it was it was really the only reason why I watched it is because a lot of people were talking about it in school. You know, I I wasn't really a big fan of movies up until then. Um, when I saw it, I I, I the first thought I, I kind of just was shocked that this was actually a movie that was out that people could actually see. You know, it was just it was just something about it that made it to where like there was nothing like it, at least in my opinion, around that time mm -hmm. that actually made that much of an impact with especially young people, you know? It was just like one of those things, like if you ask anybody in the world uh, nowadays, you're probably gonna get some people that are gonna know who Candyman is, even mm -hmm. the people who have not even been around during that time frame. So I think it's one of those really iconic movies and, uh, I'm just so glad I got to see it when I did. Yeah. And iconic is the perfect word because Tony Todd, whenever you see him, the first thing that pe people like you and I, we always see Candyman when we see Tony Todd. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not nailing him down to that role because Tony Todd is an amazing actor with an amazing amount of range. The guy can do a whole lot, but he nailed, you know, be my victim. You know, he was so amazing in that role. And with Candyman, Philip, which scene was it do you think that affected you the most? Um, I think when when they first, like, actually showed him, because there were a lot of times where they were kind of, like, faking it out, like, okay, he's not real, you know, it's they're making it up just yeah. to get, you know, some hype during, during the movie. And then out of nowhere, when she actually sees Candyman, she's, Helen is, like, really enthralled with him almost like she's in love with him, but at the same time, terrified of him at the same time. So it was just like, it was one of those really, like, really scary scenes, but also, like, you're finally getting to see who this guy is. He sounds like he's already, a, like, a creature of some sort because of how he's talking. Obviously, he's talking way differently than everybody else in the film. You know, he has, like, an echo throughout. So you know, like, he means business whenever he's around, so... I think that's definitely my favorite scene. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, man. And one scene that always stuck with me is when the kids tell him the story of the other little boy that died in the bathroom. And he, or he didn't die. I'm sorry. He got his dick cut off. And <laughs> yeah. it was just left floating in the water. And the camera pans, and you see the kid holding himself, and then all the blood in the bathroom. And here's a scene that I talk about because this is where I think Jordan Peele could really excel because even then they make, they make levity out of it. You know, the kid's like, ain't no fixing that. Might mm -hmm. as well be dead. You know? <laughs> so I mean, like, I think that's something that Jordan Peele could really nail. Um, so when somebody brings up Candyman to you, what is the first thing that pops into your head? Honestly, it's hook hand. Um, <laughs> like out of nowhere, you know, when, 
when uh, Helen is trying to get her uh, her black friend to like stay out of the out of the house, and out of nowhere his hook hand is just shown because she didn't believe in him either, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously she wasn't seeing him either. And out of nowhere, that's her first time, her first time too, actually seeing Candyman and, like in the flesh. And every time somebody, you know, brings a Candyman up to me, I kind of think of that part. And I also kind of think of like his backstory, you know, like how sad it is, like truly sad it is to where like, I'm not saying that, you know, it was okay for him to be killing the way he did, but I, I kind of understood like, I kind of understood, like, even as that young kid, like, I understood why he was doing it. And that's really what I and think about a lot, too. That's one of the best jump scares, I think, in the movie, when she goes to the mirror and then all of a sudden his hook comes through the mirror, you know, yeah. and she jumps back. Like, that's such a good jump. And have you seen any of the Candyman sequels? I have not, actually. Um, They, they go even more in-depth into his background and what happened to him. And you see him getting the bees poured on him and it becomes even more heartbreaking when you watch the sequels. And it, like you said, it doesn't justify what he's doing, but it makes you understand why he was, was the way he was. Um, so we talked about what scene affected you the most with it, you know, where he's almost hypnotizing her when he's be my victim and he's giving her that speech. But what do you think is your favorite scene from Candyman? Um, I would have to say, it's probably when she actually decides to, you know, give her own life in, in exchange for the baby that he's trying to get, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that's my favorite scene because that kind of shows, like, how twisted he, he really is. Like, he actually makes out with her with a mouthful of bees, and that was actually <laughs> a real thing. Like, behind the scenes, I saw where that they were actually using real bees, and it wasn't just like a CGI thing. It was like action. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. Like the fact that they 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 were so in love with the story that they did that and and were willing to like kind of put themselves in danger a little bit like by doing that, but having that authenticity of like seeing that in real life, I thought that was really cool. And, and you brought up a great scene there at the end when she's because at, at this point a lot of those people think that she's the one that has the baby mm-hmm. because Candyman, you know, killed the dog and they think that she did it and she took the hatchet to the girl's arm and she was trying to protect herself. But when she crawls out of that fire and she gives them the baby and she's all burned up. And I think it's so powerful how at the funeral they all show up and like they throw Candyman's hook down into the grave with her. Like it's such a powerful scene because it's just Trevor there at first. You know, and then they all show up to show their love and appreciation for getting rid of the Candyman. Um, so with the Candyman, there's so many different kills in this movie that we could talk about. But which kill do you think is your favorite kill of the movie? Um, honestly, I think I think my favorite kill is probably going to be weird, but the best friend, the black best friend, because mm-hmm. you know, like it's just it's just the the shock value that it gave. Like, because you you would think yeah. that he was going to stay alive the whole movie. And out of nowhere, you know, the one person that still believes in there, that everybody else is just, like, like trying to get rid of her. Like, she just ends up dying, and now she's by herself. And that, that like, sends her down the spiral even more now. And then on top of that, you know, the fact that the, the husband of her is, you know, fooling around with one of his students, it just makes it even more intense, like, more of right. a, a loss when it comes to the main character. So that's what I really like about that one. I, I think that's my favorite kill is at the end, you know, when her husband, Trevor, is all messed up, you know, and he's looking in the mirror and he's like, Helen. And then she shows up with the hook and she's like, you wanted me, Trevor? And then she kills him. And then this college student comes in and finds him dead. Like, that's such a poetic thing because that guy is such a fucking creep. And he didn't appreciate her at all, didn't believe her. And then for her to come back and do that. And um, another scene that I want to talk about that I've always thought was so symbolic is when they're in the uh, building and she crawls through the mirror and then they have the candy man's face on that mural and she's crawling out of his mouth when she goes into that room. That's such the, the symbolism there, like the almost the foreshadowing of her coming out of him and them becoming one. 
I think it's just so amazing going back and rewatching it now as an adult. And, you know, like we're both into film a lot more, obviously, than we were as kids. But just the symbolism and foreshadowing they have in this scene is just so amazing to me. So um, we've talked about Candyman, the first horror movie that you ever watched. Philip, real quick, I want to go scream on you here, my friend. What's your favorite scary movie? What is your favorite horror movie? Um, I'd say my favorite horror movie again would have to be get out and the reason why i say that is because like the the fact that it was so psychological rather than jump scares because i don't think i saw one real jump scare in that movie but um it was just the fact that it was so it was so, it seemed like something that had never been done before i think that's really one of the things in my opinion that it just seems like they were just going for something totally different. You know, obviously, you know, the the girlfriend of, uh, of the black guy in that movie, it seemed like, you know, she was on the side the whole time. She was true. She was basically like trying to help him out. And out of nowhere, you know, she just fakes with the keys, you know, the keys are right here. You know, I can't give them to you. You know what I'm saying? Like that yeah. was like the turning point where it just made me realize, dang, like this is, one of the best movies I've seen that year. Like it is, really, it's a fantastic yeah. movie, but it's so scary. Like you said, like when you see him falling into the sunken place, you know, when the moms hypnotized him and the thought of that, man, the thought of being in that sunken place and not being able to control yourself is such a fucking terrifying thought, man. For sure. Like that's just, it's just like, mesmerizing to me too at the same time like the fact that she was just so calm and you know he was just trying to dodge every question and you know the fact that she was able to get him to you know feel so lost and so secluded yeah. in that one moment and it was it was just I think at that moment I was kind of not even focused on everybody else in the theater I was just focused on the movie right then and there and you had Ron a TS motherfucking A, man. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> like he he saved the day. He he was he was the G in that one. Dude, sure. I love the fact one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie is when he's like when he sends him the picture and he's like, Sex slave! Sex slave! I told you. <laughs> like, that guy is so <laughs> awesome. Um, had you seen the alternate ending to that movie? I uh, know, but I heard it was really interesting. Dude, it's so depressing, man. Like, instead of Rod showing up at the end, the police show up. Spoiler alert, everybody. If you haven't seen the alternate ending, it is on YouTube, so watch it. The police show up instead of Rod, and they catch him killing her. And he ends up going to prison for life. And Rod comes to visit him, and he's talking to him on the phone, and he's like, I got to do it, man. He's like, I killed her. He's like, but I stopped it. They're never going to be able to do this to anybody again. You know, and so it's so sad. And I'm so glad they went with the ending that they went with because the movie was so heavy as it is. You didn't need that heavy ending. It was nice to see him win, you know, after yeah. all the shit that he had been through and for him to make it out of there. And, you know, I'm T.S. motherfucking A. We fix shit. You know, like it was so good, man. I'm with you. I See, now I'm not a huge fan of Us. I didn't think Us was bad, but it was so built up to me that when I seen it, I was let down a little bit. But I think Get Up or Get Out is just, it's just one of those films that I could watch over and over and over. And you notice all these different nuances throughout the whole film. And it's just, it's so good, man. It's such a great movie that you pick up on different things every time you watch it. Yeah, I felt the same way about us too. Like, I thought it was good, but I feel like it could have done a lot better, you know. And it was just like one of those movies where it was like, it was like, obviously, it's going to be a good movie, but I don't think it's going to supersede Get Out, you know? No. Get Out, he he definitely hit a home run with that one. But I, I that said, I am very, very excited about his Candyman Under the Stairs remakes because I think that Jordan Peele is not only a comedic genius, but I think that he's a horror genius. Because Get Out, even, even though I didn't like Us as much as Get Out, Us is still a great movie. It's still a fun movie. I, if it's on, I won't turn it. The deaths are great. The scares are great. I love the other family. You know, I love everything about it, but it just wasn't as good as uh, Get Out to me. Um, now, before I let you go, man, we're going to go back to Candyman. 
And we're going to rank this on a skull count. Zero being the worst, five being the best. Now, the way that we're ranking this, we're not ranking it being critics. So we're not ranking it on, you know, acting or production. We're ranking this strictly on what this movie means to you and how it affected you. So zero being the worst, five being the best. Philip, what is your ranking of the Candyman? Um, honestly, I give it a solid four. And I only say that because uh, I honestly didn't want her to die, you know? Like, right. I mean, I thought I thought it was great. And, and honestly, I thought that, you know, when it comes to, like, shock value, it was really good. But I feel as though, like, if anybody had to die, I feel like it was just that guy she was with. Like, yeah. he, he was such, like, an asshole to her, you know? And I, and, and I thought it would have been really cool if Candyman would have just taken him instead and just mm -hmm. let her actually live her life. And that way, you know, whenever she does need Candyman, he could be by her side and do, you know, whatever he needs to do for her. But I just think right. that he should have just rotted in hell, like, for the rest of the time. Yeah, honest. well, especially when we're kids, you know, because I watched this when I was yeah, very yeah. young, too, and this is, this was a scary movie, man. Whether people want to admit it or not, after we watched this movie, we all went in the bathroom and tried to say Candyman in the mirror five yeah, times, yeah. we were all like, fuck that, I'm not doing it, <laughs> you know, but it was one of those movies, like you said, as a kid, we weren't used to seeing the good guy die, right. you know, the hero lose. It wasn't something I was used to, especially, and to watch her crawl out of that fire. You're like, oh, she's going to be all right. She saved the baby. And then she's the candy man at the end, essentially, you know, like she's taken over that role and they helped her really by giving her that hook at the grave. You know, they throw the hook in and then she uses it to kill Trevor. As, you know, it's, it's a great ending, but I'm with you. I would have loved to have seen Helen survive this movie. So um, Philip, don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Everybody else, a quick reminder, make sure you're clicking the links down here in the description. These guys are kicking ass out there. They're working their asses off, especially during COVID, to try to keep us entertained. Something we're all, we've all seen everything on Netflix, Hulu, Prime, Shutter. We're always looking for new avenues and things to watch. So J96 Productions down here in the description. As always, guys, I'm Ken Sledge. Keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll see you guys soon.